Hello. My name is Zara. I am a Muslim feminist Iranian American comedian. <sighs> Impossible. Uh, I also like to classify myself as a capitalist opportunist, token for hire, sellout works, whatever suits you. A lot of um, Muslim comedians like to identify themselves as bridge builders and dialogues. I just want to take your jobs. Um, <laughs> I was so honored to be invited to do a conference, to speak at a conference in Iran. Uh, I can't name this conference, I can tell you that this is the kind of conference that's like, you know, it's supposed to inspire people, they're really innovative, everybody watches them and learns about oxytocin. And um, I was really honored, I thought, hey, like feather in my cap, finally I'm legitimate, I'm a legitimate Iranian because this conference is asking me to speak on their soil and they were like, you know, we saw your website, we love everything you do, feminist, Muslim, comedian, uh, we want you to come and speak and just please don't talk about religion, politics, or sex. And uh, I thought, you know, maybe probably I'm not the person for you. Uh, I identify as the pork eating, alcohol drinking, premarital sex having kind of Muslim. Every time I say that, people are like, I'm that kind of Catholic. You know, welcome, hi. <laughs> uh, it's a good place to be. I, you know, and my, my husband is a whitey white atheist dude, you know, and people are like, how white? I'm like, pilgrim white, okay? like. And he's atheist, he's an infidel. I have a column called My Infidel Husband. I have a show called All Atheists Are Muslim. Maybe I'm not the right person for the show. And they're like, no, you know, we have security clearances for everybody. We're gonna do a background check on you. We just need to make sure that it's okay with a ministry. And the thing is that I am American. And by that, I mean stupid. I have a really broad American education, you know? Like, I don't know anything about foreign policy. Like, you know, as soon as I say feminist, people assume that I'm smart because I, she figured out that much. But I'm really not, is the thing. And when she said ministry, the ministry is gonna check to see if you're okay to go to Iran. I was like, I know that word. It was in, it was in Harry Potter. That's an important term. The ministry is like, okay, well, you know, that's an official person. I mean, right under Dumbledore or something. I don't know. So the sort of tangent to the story is that like my family's actually really involved in the government. My my father's brother who passed away 10 years ago, was the treasurer of Iran under Khomeini. He was the last remaining cabinet member. And my last name is on like every real in Iran. Uh, so they know about me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my dad, I tell him, like, I'm so excited, I got this opportunity, and he's like, what ministry, what are you talking about? And a little bit about my father, his two favorite words in the English language are the shit and the hell. <laughs> he goes, what the shit, the hell is this, Zahra? <laughs> what do you mean a ministry? Who is it? What is their name? And growing up, my parents never talked about politics. Iranians hate about talking about politics. We say we're Persian because we don't want to be associated with the politics that come with Iran, you know? And this is, sometimes I feel like Muslims, you need to do this, we need to do this. Just change the name, you know? It's Baba Ganoush. <laughs> Everybody loves eggplant, just go for it. You know, you come up to an Iranian. Are you Iranian? Are you Iranian? Have you seen Not Without My Daughter? I haven't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you seen Not Without My Daughter? I'm Persian. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> Do you like to dance? <laughs> Do you like to party? <laughs> These are my proud issues, baby. What's going on? Um, that's the difference between a Persian and an Iranian, in case you were wondering. Is, you know, Persian is Prada, Iranian, maybe Diesel. I don't know. Back to Hogwarts. Um, my dad is like, who is this person? You know, what is their name? Are they with Sabok? Are they with, what do you mean ministry? You know, and I'm like, I have no idea, but I'm gonna go to Iran and I'll do, I'll give a speech and it's gonna be awesome. And my dad is freaking out and my mother, my mother, my mother is like, you are so negative. My mother's been here since she was 14. She doesn't have an accent. People always in my shows are like, you know, you did your mother's accent wrong. <laughs> My mother doesn't have an accent. She's been here since she was 14. I didn't do it wrong. I'm pretty sure she just doesn't have one. And they're like, no, you did her accent wrong. So I'm like, my mother said, you are so negative. 
she says, you're so negative and you're going to get her in trouble. This, this conference is important to her. You should let her go. Don't get in the way of these people, you know. And I don't know anything, anything about Persian politics, Iranian politics. When I grew up, I went to a pro-revolutionary Farsi school to learn the language. And we had these textbooks, and they were these theocratic propaganda textbooks, and from it, forever, I will associate Khomeini with Santa Claus. <laughs> I love the man. I love the man. And when I see him frowning, I'm sad before I understand what's happening. So I don't know anything. And my mom's like, you're being so negative. Let her go. This is important for her. And my dad said, you know, you need to understand these politics. And of course, he won't tell me about any of them. So I move forward, because that's what you do, right? And <laughs> that's the smart way to go. I'm a capitalist, like I said. I see an opportunity. I want to take it. And I want to feel this you know, sense of authenticity. And the thing that also has me going is, this might be the only way that I could see my family. Because ever since I was in Love, Inshallah, it came out in the New York Times. I was the premarital sex-having Muslim. And I wondered for a really long time, can I go to Iran? And a lot of people say I can, and a lot of people say I can't. And the same number of people who are journalists, experts, expats, government officials who say you can go are the same ones who also say don't go. So it's really uncertain, and it's really unclear. And I thought, well, she has the answer. She'll find out. So I'm working on this speech, and meanwhile, they're telling me, can you take down your website? And I did. They said, can you take down your column, My Infidel Husband? And I did. They said, can you take down every Facebook tag of you being a good Muslim, bad Muslim? And I did. I said, uh, could you contact the New York Times and ask them to take down that article about you? And I thought, you know, I'm pretty sure that as a reputable news organization, the New York Times doesn't really take articles down because you ask politely. <laughs> also, no. <laughs> no, it was a major achievement for me. And my heart is breaking because now all of a sudden, the person that I thought I could be, these, these integrated identities coming together, you know, it couldn't be. And meanwhile, I'm converting my husband to Islam so that we can go. <laughs> a little backstory about that. I have a show called All Atheists Are Muslim, and it's about my husband staying atheist and me staying Muslim and us living together with him as an atheist and me as a Muslim <laughs> and not converting him. And this was a huge, huge change for my father. My father had to accept him. And people ask, like, oh, how'd that go? I have a show about it. That's how that went. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one-hour, one-woman show. And in it, the way that my father finally, like, you know, came to accept Duncan, my husband, is that he said, you know, well, the word Muslim means one who surrenders to a force greater than himself. Does a Duncan surrender to a force greater than himself. And I said, no, you know, he believes that we have religion due to the lack of a real economic infrastructure. <laughs> He's not spiritual like that. And my dad said, oh, come on. Does he believe in a gravity? <laughs> is gravity greater than a Duncan? I don't know. Maybe it is not. Maybe he's like, I am the Duncan. I am the only damn shit in the whole damn universe. Everything revolves around the Duncan. Is that what he believes? OK, so the Duncan believes in a gravity. He surrenders to that force. He cannot change it. He's a Muslim. <laughs> so welcome to the religion of Islam, everyone. It's a grounding experience. <laughs> Meanwhile, my father, who, you know, like, does not want me to go, I find out also doesn't want me to go because he doesn't want to see his in-laws. <laughs> And I'm saying, don't you want to go back to Iran? Don't you want to go see it at least? Even if I don't do this speech, don't you want to go see family? And he goes, hey, Zahra, what if I say, don't you want to go back to a high school? <laughs> Isn't a high school going to be so fun for you? It's going to be so fun. You're going to see your old friend. And then he finds out that through this conference, my father won't be allowed to see family because we can't go to the homes of any private citizens. My dad said, oh, maybe I'll go.
And then I saw like, uh, if her grandma want to take us to her house, we could like get arrested. So we can't go. So maybe I'm gonna go. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, takes me to the second half of my journey, which I will have to leave you with, that will be in the column, My Infidel Husband, that you can find at loveinshallah.com. Thank you guys so much for having me.